Imagine a world of your own creation, where you can see what doesn't yet exist, where time and space are under your command. A world where you can do anything and there are no mistakes or wrong answers, where the only limits are those of your imagination. This is the world of modeling and simulation. Hi, my name is David, and I'm here to take you on a journey through that world. Modeling and simulation, or MS, are ways of understanding the world around us through creativity and imagination. But what does that really mean? There are three main types of models physical, mathematical, and process. A physical model is one whose physical characteristics resemble those of the item being modeled. In other words, it looks or feels like the real thing. It could be a toy plane, a statue, or the blueprints for a house. A mathematical model is one that uses mathematical symbols and relationships to describe something. You've all done graphs in math class, but it could also be a chemical formula or your baseball stats. The third type of model is the process model. It describes the steps we need to follow to get something done. This could be as simple as a to-do list, or for the computer types out there, a flowchart. With these three types of models, you can model basically anything. Equipment, systems, environments, people, even behaviors. And they can be so cool to build. At McKinley Tech High School in Washington, D.C., students learn computer science, 3D modeling, and programming. So Rick, uh, what I've seen here is pretty amazing, but it looks kind of complicated to me. So uh, how do I begin to start learning about all of this? Um, actually, it's not that complicated. What you start off with is 3D modeling, learning how to make different spheres and things, and then it's just building upon that. Uh, the program called Maya, which we use, is pretty advanced. It's college level, but we found that children as young as 12 years old can learn. Students really get into their projects. While we were there, they showed us how they made their models lip sync. Well, right now, this is the program Rigman. Um, we're practicing lip syncing and facial expressions, so that way you know you have experience with modeling faces for animation. Well, can we see the, the guy talk? Yeah. Right. You're on my side of the armrest. We're not going to have problems, are we? Enthusiasm is all you need to learn modeling and simulation. So it's fun, it's interactive, and it actually opens up a lot of fields for job opportunities. From lip-syncing human figures to modeling oil rigs, students learn how to use models in real-world applications. Samantha wants to be a cartoonist. The skills she learns here will jumpstart her career. Say I'm making like a 3D cartoon. Okay. And I gotta make the characters. So this program will be a big help to me because when I learn, when you learn how to put everything together, it's like constructing the characters, yeah. no problem. Anyone can learn modeling and simulation. No matter what your skills are, there is a place for you. Just like there are three main types of models, there are three types of simulations. Live, virtual, and constructive. A live simulation is one that involves real people operating real systems, like practicing golf or soldiers simulating military maneuvers. A virtual simulation is where real people operate simulated systems, like flight simulators or driving simulators. Constructive simulation is where simulated people operate simulated programs. People provide the input for the situation. It could be traffic, the weather, or an explosion. And the simulation tells us what might happen. Let's take a look at the different ways simulations are used. This is Breakaway Limited, one of the world's premier creators of simulations. So Ed, we've been talking about simulations here, uh, but you seem to call them serious games. What's that about? Well, serious game is the serious application of video game technology in a simulation. Breakaway creates simulations for real-world applications. One of their products, called Pulse, is a medical training simulation. Doctors are trained in a virtual environment to diagnose patients and perform surgeries. That's an example then of a virtual simulation. Yeah. Um, so there's also constructive simulation. Do you make those as well? Yeah, we have a project called Incident Commander. It's about training individuals to work together in an emergency situation. Incident Commander is a virtual world with virtual people. By providing input to the simulation, for example, an explosion, it allows police, firefighters, and other emergency personnel to learn how to work together more effectively. All simulations, live, virtual, and constructive, are great ways for people to learn how to handle situations and become better decision makers. 
Letting people make mistakes in a virtual simulation allows them to make better decisions when they go out into the real world. Simulations also allow us to test ideas before committing to them. Making models and then seeing how they work in simulations allow us to make improvements more quickly, more safely, and for less money. Modeling and simulation is used everywhere you look. From movies to games to building cars and flying airplanes, the possibilities are endless. As we've seen, students are learning how to make their own models and simulate them to do whatever they want. The world of modeling and simulation is wide open, so no matter what your interests, there's a place for you.